Hi guys. Yes, my makeup looks crazy. It's because I'm home alone on a Sunday and I'm just chilling. Also, <laughs> I'm procrastinating packing to go home for Thanksgiving, so here's where we are. Okay, so basically, I haven't posted a video since the beginning of October. I never, I have my computer right here, just in case you're wondering if I'm, what I'm going to be looking at the whole time. But I haven't posted a video since the beginning of October. I've just been living my life being very, very stressed about work, and that's why. <laughs> but I've been reading, and I want to, you know, get back into this because, oh my god, shut up. My favorite thing about BookTube, even though I haven't really been watching BookTube videos for like a month because I've been just all over the place, is just talking about what I've been reading and how I feel about it. So today I'm going to talk about all the books I read in October. So you know, we're a little delayed, but um, actually, you know what, I'm going to talk about everything I've read so far, or everything I read in October and everything I've read so far in November because I haven't read like that, that many things in November. All right, let's start at the beginning of October. You ready? <laughs> Buckle in, because I read 17 books last month. Um, the first one was The Girl with a Dragon Tattoo by Steve Larson. Very famous book. I'm not going to say what it's about because I talked about it a lot in my other video. I gave it four stars. I still really, really enjoyed it. It didn't have to be that long, which is why it's not five stars. And also, I can see why some people wouldn't like the writing style, but I really enjoyed it, so I gave it four stars. And then I read Wrecked by Leia Stone, which is a pretty short romance novel about a girl who got out of an abusive marriage and right after finalizing her divorce kind of becomes involved with this ex-con. It's very sexy, very good. I really liked that one, but I only gave it a three because like how good can it really be, you know? Anyway. It was fine. I'm gonna keep going quickly through the ones I talked about in my last video. So the next one was The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. Michaelides. Um, I give that three stars. Why? Why did I give that three stars? I really liked that. I remember really, really loving, loving the twist at the end. I'm gonna bump that up to four stars because I really liked that one. Um, the next book I read was Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero. I loved this book. I gave it four and a half stars, and that is because as much as I loved the characters, and I loved the story, and I loved all of it, uh, the writing style itself is very jarring because, um, it's not traditional narrative. Like, some parts of it are written, like, a, like, a stage, stage notes, and it breaks the fourth wall. Um, and is also like purposely ridiculous sometimes and as much as I really enjoyed it it was also kind of hard to like immerse myself in the story so I really love meddling kids but I'm only gonna give it four and a half stars up next was serpent and dove so I read this by um, Shelby Marin so this is you know about the witch and the witch hunter who have an, like a arranged marriage um, you definitely know what this book is about because <laughs> I didn't, the internet, book, book internet, uh, went buck wild <laughs> about this book, um, in a very, you know, de divisive, divisive way. So people hate it and people love it. I thought it was like on the good side of average, to be honest. Um, I thought the first half sucked, but I really liked the second half, so I gave it four stars. Oh, okay, here's where we're going. Uh, the book was a really also last month I started actually writing reviews on Goodread just to keep track of my thoughts because then this this happens and I want to remember what I thought um, I said it was a really strong three and a half okay so it's a three and a half star book not a four star book get on that Goodreads I need I need to be able to give half stars um, yeah I said I hated the first 100 pages I really like the dynamic between Lou and Reed, the main two characters. I did say the love popped up out of nowhere, which is absolutely true. It was like they fight three times and then all of a sudden she was like, I love him, which doesn't make any sense. And I, you know what? This is right. I hated the reason that they actually had to get married in the first place. Uh, as I wrote um, on October 8th, I thought the reason was irredeemably stupid. <laughs> so... 
The next book I read was Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, which I'm not going to rate because it was like a 45 page book. It wasn't 45 pages, but it was a very short, it was like an hour long audiobook. You know, cute. It's an index of all the magical character, like creatures in the Harry Potter world. So that was really fun. The next book though, Christine by Stephen King. I read this over audiobook. It's very long. Um, and I didn't really know what I was getting into, but I liked it. I gave it three and a half, four stars. The first half of Christine, which, just in case you don't know, is about, like, an evil car that comes to life and starts killing people. Basically, the first half was so fucking slow. Like, it was so slow. I almost gave up. Like, I didn't because I was going to finish it, but, ugh. Oh, it was so slow and I know that if I had been reading it with my own two hands it, it would have been able to go faster because I could just read faster but because it's an audiobook sometimes I feel like an audiobook and two times speed is like perfect you know I'm making good time I'm reading the book I'm really enjoying it and sometimes I'll get to a book that I'm just like not really enjoying and I'm on two times speed which is the fastest that um, Libby will go and I'll be like damn I need to speed this shit up but yeah, Christine was a really good spooky book. I really liked the end of it. I really, really liked the end of it. Like, the last third. Um, but, yeah. Three and a half stars for that one. Okay, so here we're gonna start with the books that I did not talk about in my last video. So, this book I read... The next two books I read in the same day. Um, these were for the 24-hour readathon I was supposed to do, which ended up being a failure because um, I only read two books and I also fell asleep and spent the rest of the time watching like, I don't know, a movie, lots of YouTube, something like that. So I read And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie, which I've read before, but I read in eighth grade, so it's been a while. Um, five stars, fantastic, loved it. It is a classic murder mystery about 10 people who are invited to an island and then start dying off one by one and they have to figure out which of the 10 of them is the murderer oh my goodness i mean it's the classic best it's like the best closed circle mystery that's ever been written i love you agatha christie um so good and then the same day i read you must what's it called you must not miss by katrina leno so okay I liked this one. I gave it three stars. You Must Not Miss is the story of Magpie, I believe her name is, and she's had a terrible, awful, horrible year, and she, you know, is just trying to get by. Her mother is an alcoholic, her dad no longer lives with them, and she's just, like, the past year of her life has been very traumatic, and she writes about a a world called Near in her diary and Near becomes reality and it was a very interesting book um, about anger I feel like and I liked it I wish it had maybe been a little longer not too long I know books in Lala really liked this book and I when I finished I watched her review for it and she was like I wish there was another hundred pages and I was like mm, I don't know about that the next book I read was behind her eyes by Sarah Pinborough holy fuck five stars so good so good and that five stars probably shouldn't be a five stars because low-key, I thought the middle of this book was kind of boring. Um, but I fucking loved it. Like, the end is so good. <laughs> okay, so I don't remember any of the characters' names. It's been a while. But actually, I remember one of them is Louise. Yes. So, Behind Her Eyes is about a single mom named Louise who um, kisses a man at a bar. And the next day realizes that it's her new boss who is married so the book is about how she kind of gets in deep um with both the husband and the wife and just the manipulations in their life and like what's going on in their relationship like is there something wrong and the ending is one of the best twists i've ever experienced in my entire life like I was 
shaken to the core. Um, I don't want to spoil anything. I feel like the end of this book um, can divide people. Like they could be loving it up until the end and hate it or they could be like me and be like pretty mad about it because I don't really particularly love domestic domestic thrillers like the m m intrigue between like a mother like a husband and wife like that's not enough to, for me to read a book like there needs to be something else um so like it could be very divisive um if you you know what I'm not gonna say anything more if you have like a question like message me and we'll like figure it out and I'll let you know like maybe what it is that you wouldn't like but god it's so good everybody should read it everybody should read this book go on and read it it's it's perfect the next thing i read was a novella short novel by jillian flynn called the grown-up so this is a like a hundred pages and it's about this unnamed narrator who um tells people's fortunes and a woman comes in asking for help because she feels like her house is haunted and also that her stepson is like a sociopath like gonna kill them so it's really short like that's really all I can tell you without spoiling anything I really liked it I gave it four stars I mean I liked the end which is a uh, I would say fairly ambiguous ending so if that bothers you I wouldn't really get into it but it's really so short I think that everything that was developed was developed the best that it could have been and I really liked it so I listened to it while I was driving to roller derby the next book I read was destined for an early grave by Janine Frost which is the fourth book for in the night Huntress series which I just call the cat and bones books because those are the names of the first two characters like the main characters um I don't fucking remember what happened in this one. One second. Okay, I do remember what happened in this one. I gave it three stars. It was not as good as the third one, but it was better than the fifth one, I think. I don't remember. God, I've read so many of these now. <laughs> anyway, um, basically, it's the fourth one in the series, so I can't really tell you what it's about, but the general premise of the series is that Kat is a girl who is she's a woman at this point she's a woman um who is half vampire her dad is a vampire and so she kind of benefits from that by killing other like bad vampires who are I don't know murderers or something um with her vampire boyfriend Bones aka the love of my life I love you Bones please call me you know they just kick butt they just kick butt. You know what? Okay, I remember being really mad at this book. Okay, I got it. I remember. So, this was the thing that really bumped it down for me under the third one. Kat is just trying her best. She's in a world with a lot of vampires who are really old and powerful. She doesn't know all the rules and she cares very deeply about the people in her life even though her mom gets on my fucking nerves like so bad and so does Tate. Tate can like kiss my ass. I hate him. But she will do something because she believes there is a dire situation. Um, so like there's a fight going on. And like she believes they're gonna lose or something like that so she does something crazy that puts herself in danger and then she gets back and everybody's like you dumb bitch we had it handled we had a plan and she's like well you didn't fucking tell me that and then they're all like we promise not to have secrets from each other you should tell us when you have a plan I'm like did you not just get mad at her because you had a plan that you didn't tell her about and she messed up your plan that you didn't tell her about everybody's so mean to her like she's not an idiot i'm getting really upset right now but that's because like this is my my biggest complaint about this series is that everybody's just so fucking mean to cat like she's just trying her best nobody's helping her out Ugh. anyway vlad aka dracula is a kick-ass character love that guy love that guy Another thing is that these books kind of like go up and down in terms of sexiness. So I remember this book being less sexy than the fifth one. But then the sixth one, which we'll get to later, 
is the least sexy of all of them so far. There's only one more. There's only seven in the series, so I have one more to go. Anyway, that was Destined for an Early Grave. <laughs> I'll flash the title up again, or the thingy up again, so you can remember what the fuck I'm talking about. And I started yet another series! I started the Women's Murder Club series by James Patterson, starting with First to Die. Three stars. It was an average book. Okay, here's the thing about these long series. I love easy reading. Like, I love it. Like, I will challenge myself if I need to. Thanks, you just hit me. I will challenge myself if I need to, but do I really want to? No, I don't really want to. So give me a series that currently has 19 installments. Yes, I will read them. Will I love any of them? Probably not. But will I still enjoy them even though I don't really like them? Yes. Anyway, so First to Die is about a woman named, what's her name? Is it Lindsay? I don't, yes, Lindsay Boxer. She is an uh, inspector in the murder, homicide, that's what it's called, homicide department of the San Francisco Police Department. Um, and there is a man, this is the first one, so I can just tell you what's going on. Actually, I could just tell you what's going on in all of them, because they're like, there is running things, but they also kind of each stand on their own. Anyway, so there's a guy going around killing newlyweds, and she's like, I'm on the case. And the premise of the whole series is that there she's in the police department, and then her friend Claire is a medical inspector, and their friend, um, unknown name, their friend Cindy is a writer for the crime section of the San Francisco something, and their friend Jill is a, what is she? She's an assistant DA for the city of San Francisco. So it's like these three, no, four like women in power positions of their jobs, like solving mysteries, like finding murderers. And um, like they're fine. They're not great. But like if you like reading series like I do where they're like really easy and you just kind of fly through it, they're fun to listen to while I drive to work. What can I say, you know? Did I leave a... Okay, what? Here's my review on Goodreads. Honestly, to be honest, the main character is so dumb. Like, the deductive leaps she makes are a little too big to be believed. That's absolutely true. She'll like know two things and then somebody will say something that is kind of... Like, she'll be like, I know the killer... I don't know has purple hair and a nose piercing. And somebody else will be like, I know somebody who has purple hair and a nose nose piercing. And then she'll be like, that's the killer. But like, there's more than one person with purple hair and a nose. And she like makes it all fit to work for her. She's just like, I have a feeling in my gut. I'm like, okay, but prove it. Anyway, <laughs> the other thing I said is that it's like a bad episode of Criminal Minds. Which I fucking love. I fucking love Criminal Minds. Even the bad episodes. So, yup. <laughs> the next book I read was Feed by Mira Grant, which if you don't know is the, is a pen name of Sean McGuire, who wrote Middle Game, which is one of my favorite books I've read this year. Five stars to that one. Um, Feed, I got, what did I give? I gave four stars. So Feed is about journalists who are following a presidential candidate on the election trail but all of this is happening 20 years post the zombie apocalypse. There's a lot of dogs barking right now, but I'm not gonna stop. So yes, journalists on the campaign trail post zombie apocalypse, there's conspiracies. This is very clearly written by someone who is not a journalist, but I still really liked it. You know what I mean? The main character's name is Georgia and the tone is very it's a comedy it's like a horror comedy so the tone really reminded me of Zombieland which is like one of my I love that movie um and I really liked reading about journalists I like reading about journalists um even when <laughs> like they don't really vibe like journalists like the ones that I know but it's okay I will say this book has no romance the most important relationship in this entire book is between um Georgia and her brother Sean um, 
and I really really enjoyed it I really liked the relationship dynamics it was a funny book I think my my real only complaint is that sometimes like like a zombie walking will be described as one thing and then that same phrase will be used the rest of the book every time that same thing is described so like some phrases just showed up a lot like more than I needed them to more than she needed them to but overall I actually really liked it um the ending was it got to me so honestly if there's any book so far that I've read that I really liked and would suggest that I don't think people have heard of it's Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough which people definitely have heard of Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero and then this one the next thing I read was Second Chance by James Patterson. Did I even say the name of the first one? The name of the first one is First to Die. I don't know if I said that, but yes, Second Chance by James Patterson. What is this book about? I don't remember. <laughs> I just read my Goodreads review and the first sentence is, I can't tell if this one was better or worse than the first one since they're both so aggressively mediocre. <laughs> I'm so mean. Um, so Second Chance is about somebody who is, there's like a racially motivated spree killer going through San Francisco, and that's the mystery of the second one. Um, here's my thing. I don't know what James Patterson looks like, um, but from the vibe I got when reading this, I don't know if he's the person that should be writing about race in a sensitive way. Yeah, he's white. <laughs> um, and I know this book came out in, oh, 2005. Dude, if it's 2005, maybe you shouldn't have characters refer to the black murder victims as blacks like and and it was one of the main characters and it's like do you think it's okay because it was Claire one who is black like one of the main characters she is black um, is that because she said it but you're a white guy writing her and also I don't know if this is his fault but I'm listening to all of these on audiobook right all of Basically, every single book I've read in the past month and a half is an audiobook, except for the ones that I read during the readathon. Everything else has been an audiobook. Just overarching. Um, but I don't know if it's him or if it's the narrator, but she gave Claire and her husband both like New Orleans accents. I don't think it's like ever implied that they're from like Louisiana. So is it just because they're black? And you need to give them a different voice and you can't just do normal woman voices also I don't know if she's ever been to San Francisco but like not that many people have southern accents they're not the best audiobooks but they're like well produced I just don't really love the narrator anyway second chance I gave three stars as well it wasn't my favorite yeah I also here's the thing though I flew through second chance real fucking fast and that's because I was in the middle of reading The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn and I hated it. <laughs> I gave it two stars because honestly the writing like honest wasn't that bad. It was so boring I can't even explain to you how bored I was and how little I cared. I didn't care. I read I like I was 70% done and my thing with the three domestic thrillers thrillers that I've read are uh, The Silent Patient, Behind Her Eyes, and The Woman in the Window. And for the first two, I really liked the beginning. I was like, okay, the middle's kind of slow. And then the twist would happen and like at 60% things would start to pick up and by 70% I'm like back in. With um, The Silent Patient. I was like really in but I really didn't really love the middle and with behind her eyes I was so in with the twist it made up for me not liking some of the middle parts but with this one 
I was so fucking bored and it was 70% and I was like, nothing's fucking happened. I hate this. I looked up an article with spoilers, read the end and went, mm, and was like, okay, I'm done. Rate it two stars. Whatever. It didn't offend me. But I didn't like it. <laughs> sorry. Sorry to you, AJ Finn. The next book I read was This Side of the Grave by Janine Frost, book five in the Night Huntress Cat and Bone series. Um, I, at this point, it's just, I can't tell you what this book is about. I gave it three stars. Okay. Every time I talk about these books, I like go on a rant. Here's another one. Of all of these books, I'm pretty sure I've rated all of them three stars, except for the third one, which I rated four stars. So like, if you just looked at this like out of context, you would think I didn't like really love it that much. Like I like I read it, but it was like pretty average. I'm living. Like I fucking love these. Like I really like them, but I can't in good conscience rate this more than 3. I am genuinely thinking of bumping everything up a star after I finish them all out, but I have one more book to go and if I fucking hate the end, I'm going to let them suffer with 3 stars. But I really like this book. What can I say? Um, this is the fifth one in the series. I said, you know what, maybe this one just does deserve the three star though, because my review, which I wrote on October 31st, so it's been 24 days, like, I'm, how am I supposed to remember this? My review says that I felt like it was the most half-assed installment so far. It felt very short. Okay, you know what, I do remember this. I remember reading it and feeling like this was the last third of the book that came before it. But because that book was so long, they were like, oh, we can just, like, put that in another book. You know? We'll just make it its own book. And so when I checked how long this book was, I was shocked that it was longer than... It's 357 pages. I was shocked. I was like, this book can't be more than, like, 250 pages. Because it's so... It feels so fucking short. I also have listened to all of these on audiobook. Because, like I said, <laughs> I don't read anymore with my hands. Um, but yes, I said, hot damn, this author loves a good deus ex machina, uh, but it also had one of the raunchiest sex scenes I have read, also, oh, my hair is just, like, not cooperating, one of the raunchiest sex scenes I've read in so long, like, this book, this author, she, like, sometimes, like, comes through on the sex scenes and then there will be like a whole book where they where like cat and bones look at each other once and like that's all that happens this book i was sitting in my car driving to work hi baby sitting in my car driving to work listening to it i had to pause it and be like <sighs> and like send a text to all of my friends that i was blushing so hard i was gonna die like it was it was so good. I loved that. That was great. That was great. Good writing. Janine Frost, you did that. So proud of you. Anyway. Um, yeah, that's really all I have to say about this one. Um, it felt very half-assed, and it still had one of the best sex scenes in the entire series. So, what can I say? Three stars. <sighs> Up next, I read Uprooted by Naomi Novik. I gave this four stars. I love this one. So this is a story about a girl whose name I literally don't remember because I didn't read it with my eyes, so I didn't process it all the way. Her name is Agnieszka, and basically she lives in a valley where every 10 years, the wizard who's their protector, his name is the dragon, um, chooses a girl to live with him and for 10 years she doesn't get to leave the tower where he lives um, and then after after they're released and he picks a new girl um, they always leave the valley and she expects her best friend to be chosen um, and he picks her instead and it's about her kind of discovering magic and how there are greater evils at play specifically the wood that surrounds the valley and it's like capital w wood the wood itself is an evil entity um my biggest complaint about this book is that i felt the plot meandered a lot 
Um, I like when I can describe a book and the plot is like, oh, these people have this goal. And it doesn't have to be a spoiler, it can be just a general goal, but there's like a specific goal and you kind of see that pathway through the book. And maybe that makes me kind of simple for liking that. But this book, I don't feel like had a, an end goal. It, it got there. It got there and I really, really loved it. Like I gave it four stars. I really, really enjoyed this. I loved the type of magic that the main character had. I loved, loved the romance. That was a very emphatic love, and that's because I did. Um, like, there was a lot of things that I really, 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 really liked about this book, but one thing I didn't like was that the plot just kind of, like, there were multiple times where I was reading, and I was like, I don't know where this is going, and not in a way where I'm like, what's gonna happen? There's gonna be plots. But like, I just didn't know what direction it was taking me, you know? So that's my only complaint though. I really enjoyed this. If you like fantasy, like pick this one up. This is really good. So good. This is also the book that I thought I was getting when I got uprooted from the library um, at school like months and months ago. Fortunately, I actually liked this one because I hated <laughs> the Hazelwood, so yeah. We're into November. Okay, Uprooted was the first book I read in November. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, the next book I read was Animal Magnetism by Jill Shalvis. So this was a book about a man named Brady and a girl named Lila. And basically she runs a kennel in this small town of Sunshine, Idaho. And he is in town visiting his brothers who own a the vet clinic in Sunshine. Um, brothers, I say, he was like, he's their foster brother, but they all were really close. Anyway, so she has kind of been very sheltered, and, um, since she dropped out of college and came back to Sunshine, hasn't really had that much of a love life, and Brady is only going to be in town for a month, so she's like, hey, let's get it on while you're here, and he's like, damn, okay, and his brothers are like, dude, she's our best friend, like, we're gonna be protective and give you the talk like six times, which was kind of annoying. Um, I gave this book two stars. Why? Oh, yeah, okay. So basically, it's the, the romantic conflict is that he's leaving and he, you know, he doesn't do commitment. And so the whole thing is like, she's totally chill with that. But by the end, he's like, she's so cool with me getting, not committing, but now I wanna commit. But I told her that I don't wanna commit. So like, what do I do now? And like, that's the thing. Um, the writing was fine. I gave it two stars because um, like overall the book was kind of trash. Uh, second of all, the first line of the book is Brady thinking, the best way to start a Saturday is to have sex with a naked woman who's already in your bed and then she makes me breakfast. And like, that kind of misogyny, just like right off the bat, is not usually a good sign. Um, that kind of carried through with the anti-Middle East kind of rhetoric that followed Brady around because his previous job had been as a pilot in the Air Force or something like that and now he like is a pilot for hire but he still goes to like third world countries I guess for like politically sensitive missions um but every single time they were trying to contrast you know so living in like small town sunshine Idaho and like the comforts of home with you know his previous life it was always like the dirt and the huts and being hungry in dirt in the Middle East in those third world countries. And I was like, oh my God, bro, like chill out. And it was the, it was the narration. It wasn't like his words. So it wasn't even like, oh, you can blame the character. Like it was the writing. Yeah. Also, um, Lila had a weird thing with food where it's like, I guess at this point, because I've read the first three books in this series now. At this point, it's kind of established that it's kind of her personality where she's just like, I just love junk food. But um, during this book, it really more read as that she had, like she thinks of food in kind of a moral way. Like this is good food and this is bad food. And if I eat this, I'm going to be bad. 
and be fat and so I have to make up for it by eating a salad and be good that kind of thing and it just read very much like you know it was like oh she's just like a little girl she's so cute she has you know food she's a girl but in actuality it was like she has a bad relationship with food and the book is just not addressing it because the book doesn't see that as the way that it actually is anyway so yeah not great <laughs> two stars but I was like I'm still gonna read the next one so we out here the next book I read was Third Degree by James Patterson, which is the third book in the Women's Murder Club series. This book, I gave three stars. I think, I think it's the best out of the three so far, but I'm also mad at it. Um, this book, the premise is that, okay. So basically, my problem with this book was that the, the murders that are happening are that these people who are upset about corporations hoarding wealth um, at the expense of the poor and the hungry around the world. Um, so people who are upset about that are killing those who are very high up in the corporations who are at fault in these things. And what this book does is it places the people who are upset about these injustices um, in the role of crazy extremists. What did I, how did I write this? I said, the whole thing is people fed up with big pharma and big tech uh, exploiting the common people. And they're taking action against those who are at fault, which obviously don't condone murder. Um, but the book frames all of the people as antagonists with unhinged extremist views who can't be taken seriously and hate capitalism. Um, so there's, they're, you know, they're all anti-American and anti-patriotic and, you know, they don't like progress. And it's just kind of how they're framed, which as someone who agrees with them on like multiple levels, my camera died, my phone died. <laughs> And I didn't realize until after I done finished talking. Problem is, I fully agree with like 80, 80 to 90% of, of all the points that were made by the bad guys. Um, so I didn't love that. It just felt very like, oh, those crazy kids caring about people in other countries and food instability and just a lot of stuff. Not a huge fan gave it three stars um there was also i'm gonna put a spoiler up one of the main characters her name's jill she's the assistant district attorney um in this book it's revealed that she's in an abusive marriage and um you know she confides in her friends and it had been emotionally abusive it had it's recently become physically abusive especially since she had a miscarriage in the previous book the problem is she is murdered in this book uh, by the bad guys. And I just feel like, first of all, you just killed one of your main characters. She's one of the main four characters. Second of all, that's, like she had just left her husband and that's the kind of, of resolution you're going to to give to your character who has just left this abusive environment like that's that's the reward she gets for taking action um i don't know also she was the only jewish character which i didn't even know until after she died uh it was just i don't know not my um not my favorite of of the books so far the next book i read was animal attraction which is the second book in the animal magnetism series i just talked about um that before i believe about brady and lila this is about brady's foster brother Dell, um who is a vet at the animal clinic in sunshine idaho and jade bennett who is the receptionist i like this one better than the first i think there's i read three of these and i think they keep getting better i think i like this one better it was a better dynamic between the characters um based on like a long friendship or uh, she's Jane has been in town for about a year and a half and um you know they've gotten close and Jade before coming to Sunshine 
uh, was the victim in an unspecified attack that takes place in Chicago where her family lives and so she's working through trauma and PTSD um, I definitely think that wasn't handled the best I think it was explored respectfully but I think it was also very sudden there wasn't enough warning the, the context of the writing didn't really lead up to the sudden panic attack that was being described I don't know. Um, I thought it was kind of annoying that she was in town for a year and a half and it took until a month before she was leaving for them to finally get their heads out of their asses, but mm, whatever. They also didn't have a steamy scene until more than halfway through the book, which is fine and made sense for the relationship that they were having, but also I signed up for like a romance novel with like something that could happen, I think, maybe. But yeah, the next book I read was One Grave at a Time by Janine Frost, which is the sixth, count them, sixth book in the Night Hunter series. This is mm, my least favorite so far. It was the most half-assed in that it was very episodic. Um, there was no, like, the plot felt very unfinished. It felt very like point A to point B with like not that much happening in the middle. I feel like um, Cat and Bones' relationship at this point is really established, which I love. I love books that have an established couple in them. Like I really like that, especially when um, it's like throughout a series and you get to see them get together and then they're together and you just, you just to enjoy them being together. However, there was like one steamy scene in this entire book and it was like really boring. Ugh, and there was like really like they interact but there wasn't really that much like interaction between them I don't know I wasn't a huge fan of that um I also um I think it's my second to least favorite in the series I feel bad for rating all the other ones pretty low because I like them mostly better than this one I think the only one I like less than this is um maybe the fifth one and the first one I love Kat I love Kat so much also Vlad wasn't in this one I missed him that was sad I'm sorry I'm like not looking at you at all. I'm like looking at my computer because I'm trying to figure out the Goodreads stuff. The next book I read was A Wrinkle in Time by Margaret Langell. Not Margaret, Madeline. Madeline Langell. So um, A Wrinkle in Time is a book that was published in 19... Published in 1962. Okay, so it's about a girl named uh, Meg. Meg Murray and her brother Charles Wallace and their friend Calvin O'Keefe um, and their kind of trans universal thank you quest to save Meg and Charles Wallace's father from an evil entity right now girl anyway <laughs> um, I really liked it I gave it four stars it was written, I mean, some things were kind of weird, but it was also a children's book that was written in 1960, so I'm not gonna begrudge it a little, a bit of a weird phrasing. I loved Mrs. Who, Mrs. Witch, and um, Mrs. What's It. I thought they were great. I loved them a lot. It was a little overtly Christian for me, but the only reason I picked up on that is because they literally talk about Jesus for like one page. I'm not someone who picks up on stuff like that. Like, I had to be told that Narnia was, like, very religiously influenced. It was, like, a Jesus allegory. Um, did not get that. I didn't get the, like, coming back to life thing at the end of Harry Potter. Had to be told that. Didn't get any of that when I read Lord of the Rings. Had to be told that. Loved VeggieTales growing up. Recently became aware that it's, like, a Christian children's cartoon. No idea. Maybe I'm just stupid, but... Yeah, I didn't pick up on it, but this was a little like over, but it didn't bother me because it didn't come up all that often. It was just very imaginative and I really enjoyed it and I wanted to read the book before watching the movie and now that I have Disney Plus, thanks to my uncle, who I love, um, I can watch A Wrinkle in Time now. But it was good. There's, it's like a quintet. There's like five books with like related characters. So I'm going to be reading the rest of those. I'm on hold for the audiobook now. Yeah, very exciting. Very exciting. I really liked Meg. I... The audiobook was really good. It was the edition that came out with the movie. So the director, Ava DuVernay, hey, what? She did, um, she spoke before the book and then Margaret, not 
market, Madeline Langle's granddaughter actually spoke after the book. And hearing both of them speak about this book that was so important to each of them, and hearing Ava talk about how she lost her father, and this book helped, and just hearing about, you know, people talk, like, I don't know, I think it's a really good book for, for girls who maybe don't feel like they fit in, because Meg is a complicated character. I just really liked it. I don't know. I can't give it a five star. I didn't love it that much, but I really liked it. Which is good, because the next book I read, I fucking hated. Um, and that is Someone to Watch Over Me by Lisa Claypas. Claypas? Claypas. <sighs> okay, so this book is about Grant Morgan, a Bow Street runner in London, and Vivian Duvall, who is a courtesan, um, which means it's like a, a, a high class sugar baby, but in Regency, like in, in old timey London, like she, you know, is very often a mistress. She sleeps with men for protection and money and gifts and uh, status. Um, basically, he is called to inspect the discovery of a dead body in the Thames, which is the river in London. And he gets there, and they turn her over in the water, and he's first in his head is like, I know this, this bitch, Vivian Duvall. And then she coughs, and he's like, damn, the bitch is alive! Because <sighs> they're stupid and didn't even think to check. So there she is, Vivian Duvall. And he brings her back to his house. She wakes up and is like, I don't have any memory. Like, I don't know who you are. I don't know who I am. I don't know what's going on. And he's like, I rejected Vivian two months ago. And she was pissed off because I rejected her. So she spread a rumor that she rejected me. And I was embarrassed. So to get back at her, I'm going to tell her that she was my mistress, sleep with her, and then not give her my protection so she feels used just like I felt used when I was the victim of a rumor. Anyway, he's an asshole if that whole little thing didn't tell you what was going on. Um, overall, I gave this book two stars because I actually really liked the writing style. For romance novels, like, I will pretty much take whatever. I like it all, but this I think was better than average. Um, yeah, that's really all I can say. Um, in my review on Goodreads, I talked a, a bit about how basically Grant, the main guy, like, just kind of hates women. So when he first interacts with Vivian, he's like, oh my god, she's beautiful. And then he talks to her and she, you know, seems to be a little self-centered, you know, interested in presenting herself in a nice way and, you know, conceited and she's just a very you know, not a very deep person. And he was like, ugh, she's so self-obsessed. Um, but now that, okay, just Madonna whore complex, basically. He is like, oh, she's a bad person because she has sex with men. Like, but she also has sex with men because she was already a bad person and therefore it makes sense that she would get into that line of work. You know what I mean? Like, that is the constant undercurrent of his internal monologue is just sex work bad because she's bad therefore sex work bad but she was already bad and also she's really hot I hate that other people have touched her because I want to be the only one to have sex with her but I also hate her for having sex with other people and not me and also hate her for not having sex with me like and then, okay, another thing, spoiler, spoiler going up. It's not even Vivian. It's Vivian's identical twin sister, Victoria, which means that, oh my God, Marcy. Basically, the woman that he rescued, that's, oh my, basically, the woman that he rescued was living in his house and he was looking at her and he was like, oh my God, she's like so sweet 
she's like hot and can read which like when does that ever happen and she's like nice there's no way this is Vivian but I know that it's Vivian so that she's she's clearly pretending to be a good person she has to be a bad person because Vivian has sex with people like why is she being nice turns out it's not even Vivian therefore all of his net he doesn't have to like like aren't isn't falling in love in romance novels supposed to make you like reconsider your preconceived notions he doesn't have to reconsider shit because the book reinforces that in fact it is Vivian bad twin Victoria good twin who you know lived in the country and took care of their father like he doesn't even have to like change his mind about anything because Victoria ends up being the perfect hot demure virgin that he wanted who looks exactly like Vivian but has a completely different personality and is good because she's never had sex with anyone else I think I'm done talking about this book now but that's how I felt about it the next book which is the last one that I have completed in November is oh my god Marcy I swear to god it's rescue my heart by Jill Shalvis which is the third book in the animal magnetism series it's about the third brother Adam Basically, Adam used to work in the military as a search and rescue person, and something went bad, so he has PTSD. But now he trains search and rescue dogs. So that's how he like works at the vet that his brother, Del, uh, is the vet at. And basically, when he was younger, he had like a fling with this woman, Holly, and told her, like, hey, the judge, because he got in some law trouble, legal trouble, uh, he was like, hey, the judge told me I had to join the military. So instead of being like, I'm breaking up with you, he was like, mm, the judge told me, gotta go, peace, pieces. Anyway, it's 12 years later, and she's like, my dad's been on a hunting trip for three days, and I haven't heard from him, can you please help me find him? And they go, and there's like tension. I like this book the best out of the three. There was the best level of communication between two like actual adults who weren't stupid, and there wasn't an arbitrary time limit set on the relationship, where the two previous books, like, there was a month like each of them had some arbitrary like month in in a month deadline this one didn't they just talked and i really liked the dynamic i thought it was good i thought it felt very short i liked holly as a as a heroine i thought she was interesting and you know we just chillin it's it's pretty chill i keep i hate that i just said that anyway that was the last book that i read so far I'm currently in the middle of Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan, and I'm having trouble, <laughs> which I feel bad about because I love the movie. That's probably why I'm having trouble is because I love the movie. Girl, you are in the way. There we go. I just feel like it's very stilted. All the dialogue is really stilted. I love the tangents that the book goes on when it's talking about wealth and history and family connections and luxury and when it maybe uh, looks into the life of a side character for a, a, pa a couple pages i really love all those parts and i i don't mind the description i love very luxurious description of wealth i don't know i just really do especially when it's it's done well which it is done in, well in this book but something about the dialogue and the way character interactions happen in this book i feel are just maybe a little too obvious maybe a little too straightforward a lot of showing not telling or you know what no take that back switch it a lot of telling not showing it just wasn't very I don't know I'm like 65% in I don't really feel like anything has happened plot wise I think that Nick is a dumbass who like he's like I'm rich I don't want to tell Rachel that she's she, I know she's not gonna be uncomfortable walking into this extreme display of wealth she's so down to earth like that has nothing to do with being blindsided by the uh, exorbitant wealth of your family dude like the fact that she's down to earth like maybe you should have told her that your your parents are really really like really rich also Eleanor Nick's mom in the movie is like a matriarch um what are you doing like yes she's still catty and influenced by her friends in the movie she's a little bit more so in the book but in the movie, she's like, she is Regina George, you know? Like, she runs her shit. Whereas in the book, she is Gretchen. You know, she, like, she, she knows all these people and she's up there on the social chain. But she's very, like, I feel influenced by people m more than I think she should be. She doesn't seem very put together. I don't know. I'm just... 
I'm also sad because I know my favorite scene from the movie is not in the book, which is like fine, but I definitely think I'm gonna like the movie better, which is unfortunate. I don't think I'm gonna read the rest of the series. As of right now, I don't think I'm gonna read the rest of the series, but I am interested to see how the book ends. So I, yeah, I went a little crazy at Barnes and Noble yesterday. So I have a whole bunch of books that I'm gonna read and I'm really excited. And I also, <laughs> I'm going to be on a plane tomorrow, so that'll give me some time to get some books to, uh, out of the way. Can I help you? I think I'm going to read the second book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. That's, I think, the one I'm going to bring on the plane with me, because why not? And it'll be a good time. And I will see you around. Hopefully, you won't have to wait another two months for a video from me.